हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एंड गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल वेलकम टू योर कंप्यूटर क्लास वेल टुडे वी हैव टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज इंटरनेट बेसिक्स सो नाउ लेट्स बिगिन वेल इन दिस चैप्टर फर्स्ट वी हैव टू डिस्कस अबाउट इंटरनेट दैट व्हाट इज दिस इंटरनेट थिंग आई होप यू ऑल नो द इंटरनेट हैज गेन पॉपुलरिटी एंड इमर्ज्ड एज एन इंपॉर्टेंट एंड एफिशिएंट मींस ऑफ communication it means right now we mostly are using this internet for the communication purpose only or for data or resource sharing only like now for a teaching purpose or for communicating to you guys i am using the internet fine the term internet is derived from the word interconnection and network it means this term internet is a combination of the word interconnection and network it simply means it is the connection of multiple networks which are connected together to share the resources around the world fine as you can see in this picture we have a globe over here and there are so many resources which are connected so it means in this internet all the resources around the world are connected fine and we all can use these resources fine we can use our mobile phones we can use our tablets we can connect our other peripherals with the internet and then we can share these devices now let's discuss about this network as we have learned just now this internet is a type of a network so first we have to discuss what is network a network is a collection of two or more computers which are connected together to share information or resources fine now in general this network is a collection it means when two or more computers are combined together for sharing data or information or other contents then in that case it will be termed as a computer network so this internet is a type of computer network which is widely spread now internet is a worldwide system of computer networks that is network of networks fine internet is also termed as networks of networks because there are so many networks which are connected like you can see there are some devices wireless some wired devices fine all of these are connected to the internet fine so now through internet computers become able to exchange information with each other and find diverse perspective on issue from a global audience fine it means now everyone can share their thoughts and knowledge with everyone around the world by using the internet only most of the people use internet for sending and receiving emails and net serving for retrieving information it means most of the time we use internet just for sharing data or sharing resources with our friends or colleagues or sometimes we just use for net surfing it means we have to find something and then we simply google that thing so it means we all are using this internet for at least one reason and that is mostly common in between us before learning further we have to discuss the history of this internet that how it is originated or how it was developed initially now in 1969 the university of california at los angeles and the university of utah were connected with the beginning of arpanet fine this arpanet stands for advanced research product agency network fine this arpanet was initially uh, created by the army of usa and at that time only there were three computers in california and one computer was in utah these four computers were connected and it was the first ever internet connection fine and they were using a 56 kilobit per, per second circuit it means at that time the maximum speed was 56 kilobits which is very less in these days fine and which is sponsored by us department of defense it means us army fine so initially the us defense was uh, you can say that was sponsoring this simple network this little network the goal of this project was to connect the computers of different universities and defense system of us fine they just want to connect some networks of some universities and some defense organizations now in mid 80s another federal agency was there fine nsf the national science foundation they created their own network and it was termed as nsf net fine there was one organization named as nsf so they created their own network which was termed as nsf 
and this NSF was more capable than ARPANET. They have a bit better speed, fine, they were using some better technology. So then it was used for further use. The only drawback of NSF net was that it allowed only academic research. It means it was only for the universities. Fine. This NSF allowed a network only for the universities. It means some private business owners cannot use it. Now, there were so many organizations or there were so many persons who are working outside. They all were looking for this network. Fine. So that's why in the end of 1990s, the NSF and ARPANET were connected to form internet. Fine. And then this internet arrived. It means this internet is a combination of ARPANET and NSF net. After the development of this world wide web thing, this internet was widely used. So now first we will discuss how this internet actually works. Now, this internet as we know that it is a combination of multiple networks. It means there are so many small networks which are connected over here. Fine. And all these networks are the backbone of internet. It means without these networks, internet cannot work. All computers on internet communicate with each other using TCP IP, which is a basic protocol. Fine. This TCP IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol. As we have learned this earlier, TCP is responsible for data sharing and IP is responsible for locating the devices. Fine. So it means here this protocol will manage the transmission of data, files or documents on the internet by breaking the files into small pieces and these small pieces are called packets. Fine. So it means in internet whenever you will share your resources, these resources are first captured by TCP IP. Then this TCP will simply break your data into small packets and then these packets will be sent to the other receiver. Fine. Now each packet contains actual data and address part. It means in each packet there will be an address and then there will be some actual data. Fine. And this each packet is given to the receiver one by one. Fine. Address of destination and source up to 1500 characters. Now there can be maximum 1500 characters in a single packet including everything. Now the TCP of the functioning of TCP and IP is given as follows. This T TCP will break your message into small packets. And then when at the receiver's edge you will receive that message again, then it will again reassemble the data. Whereas IP only take care of our addresses. It means it will not touch your data. It will simply check for the location of the sender as well as the receiver. It means in each network gateway where the gateway will check your network, this IP will provide the address to the gateway, whereas TCP will break the data into few pieces. Fine. Now, next we have to discuss some basic uses of internet. I don't think that I have to discuss this with you. So, what you can do is just now, you can pause this slide. Fine. You can read these points. If in case you have any problem with this, you can comment down. Now, we have to discuss about the advantages of internet. Well, there are so many advantages, but we have listed a few here. The first is greater access to information and reduces research time. Second is it allows you to easily communicate with other people. A valuable resource for companies to advertise and conduct business. Now we have to discuss disadvantages of internet. The first thing is that cyber frauds. Cyber frauds may take place involving credit card or debit card numbers and our details. Fine. The biggest fraud on internet is our cyber data. It means they can easily track your credit card numbers, your bank details and then they can perform transactions from your bank account without your permission. Fine. The next is unsuitable and undesirable material is available sometimes. It can be used by notorious people such as terrorists. It is a major source of computer virus. As we know that this virus is the biggest hit nowadays. Fine. So, in internet, there are so many viruses, there are, there are so many malicious programs that can corrupt our data. Next is, messages sent across the internet can be easily intercepted and are open to abuse by others. It means any hacker or any middle attacker 
can easily access our messages and then they can misuse these informations so that's why we have to use it very safely now it is difficult to check the accuracy of information available on the internet fine in internet there are so many fake pages fake websites and fake companies available there so it becomes very difficult for us to check the authenticity of a data after this much we have to discuss about this most important term that is world wide web this world wide web was introduced in 13th march 1989 fine it is a system of internet servers that support hypertext and multimedia to access several internet protocols on a single interface it is often abbreviated as web or www this www is often termed as web it is a way of exchanging information between computers on the internet it means this world wide web will define us or it is a method through which we can exchange our information on the internet fine and trying to tie them together into a vast collection of interactive multimedia resource it is only a portion of what makes up the internet but it is the fastest growing part of the internet fine now the best important thing is that in this www there are some set of rules which are given there it consists of all the protocols which are required it defines that how a page has to be opened it defines how a data item will be sent fine it means it contains a lot of information about our web pages and for each and every task on internet we must have to follow this www and that is the main reason that in all our websites we have this world wide web thing this makes the web a very useful tool for finding information about any topic now after discussing about this world wide web and internet we will discuss about a very famous application named as web browser you all might have found that for using the internet in our phones or in our computers we have to use some applications such as google chrome or in some cases opera or uc browser fine so this opera uc browser google chrome or mozilla firefox all these applications are termed as web browsers fine so now we have to discuss that what is this web browser how many types of web browsers do we have and how these web browsers actually help us now it is a software application this web browser is a software application that is used to locate retrieve and display some content on web fine including web pages it means this web browser can help us to retrieve some data to display some data or to locate some data from world wide web it means with the help of this we can see that data which is stored in internet fine these are programs used to explore the internet it means the, with this world wide web, oh sorry it means with this web browser we can easily explore the content that is stored on internet fine now it is an interface that help a computer user to gain access over all the content on the internet fine this web browser is a interface that can help us to gain access of the content that is available on the internet it means if in case you have to search anything on the internet for that you must have to use a web browser and without a web browser you cannot use internet fine now we can install multiple web browsers on a pc and these web browsers can have n number of features fine with the help of these web browsers we can navigate files folders websites we can download media we can upload media and we can do n number of activities so it means if you have to use internet you must have to use a web browser and without a web browser we cannot use internet fine now sorry for the error the web browsers are divided into two categories the first one is termed as text based and the second one is termed as graphics based fine so now we have to discuss about both these categories and then we will discuss further things now this text based web browsers are the old version of web browsers fine initially in late 1990s the web browsers that we were using these browsers were only able to show the text data it means no other media content can be shared by using these browsers fine and the first browser and the only browser that is available right now as a text browser is lynx l y n x lynx is the text based web browser that is generally used now we have to discuss about the graphical web browsers well 
generally the web browsers with the help of which we can see both text and graphics this graphic can include images picture media fine it can be some flash content all these browsers are termed as graphical web browsers fine and some most common examples of these browsers are internet explorer mozilla firefox then we have netscape safari we have google chrome we have opera in our mobile phones we have the uc browsers fine now there's one important term that you must have to know the first graphical web browser was ncs the first graphical web browser was ncsa musac there are some homework topics for you all you have to search and write these few topics you have to search about client server web page website web portal web client then blog then news group then emails and email addresses fine these are some homework topics for you all so you have to search for all these topics and then you have to write them in your computer register fine in the next term we will discuss the remaining part of this chapter so thank you so much for watching